these are one of two of the oldest sculptures we have in the world, both coming from ancient Egypt. So we know that they, dogs and cats have existed for more than 3,000 years because these sculptures were made th at least 3,000 years ago, if not more. Cats and dogs. Cats and dogs were very highly respected in ancient Egypt. In fact, if you know a little bit about the Egyptian gods, there was a god called Anubis who had the head of a jackal, which is a type of dog in ancient Egypt. And then cats as well. A lot of the goddesses had heads of, of a cat. The great sphinx in ancient Egypt, maybe you've heard of that amazing um, sculpture that it's in front of a pyramid that has the head of a human and the body of a lion, okay? Cats were so important in ancient Egypt that if you were caught harming a cat, you could get arrested, okay? It was very, very, cats were very, very highly respected. Okay, so moving along to the ancient Romans, dogs were very, very important. So this was close to 2,000 years old. This is a mosaic, which is tiny little tiles that are glued together to form. This is a dog, and it says Caven Canem. And in ancient Roman times, that meant beware of the dog. Who's ever seen a sign like that in front of somebody's house or in front of a building? Beware of the dog. Yeah. So dogs were trained even almost 2,000 years ago to be protectors, to protect people or protecting somebody's business or their building. So dogs were trained that way. And even now people have guard dogs or we think about dogs, police dogs, they're trained. Seeing eye dogs are trained for so many different things. They're service dogs and I think they're service cats too. In ancient China, Cats were very, very, very um, respected as well because they hunted down rats and pests. So you would have one in the house because you did that way to keep rats and other pests out of the house. So you see lots of cats painted in ancient China. And then in paintings, like this is a portrait painting of a lady in the Renaissance, people who had a lot of money, who dressed very fancy, you'll often see them holding tiny little dogs as pets. This is another painting of doggies drinking milk from a bowl. And then this is a sculpture of dogs that are made, they look like little Scotty dogs or Westies. These, do you know what this sculpture material is? These are actually bicycle chains. You know, like chains from your bike. Tons and tons of bicycle chains to make the fur of this dog. And then the other cat sculpture I wanted to show you that I thought was so cool. These green, look at these green cats here. So these are made out of plaster that the artist painted radioactive green. Are they really radioactive? No. But it's a sculpture that the artist didn't notice in the background. Everyone else is dressed in gray. And then you have these bright green glowing cats. Oh good, I got to see some people like this one. Let's get our piece of paper ready to go. I want you to have it vertically, which is the up and down way. Okay. Thumbs up when you have your paper and you are ready to go. Okay, step number one. Take the top of your paper and fold it to the bottom. And remember, you should have it the milkshake way, the up and down way. Thumbs up when you've folded it in half. The opening should be at the bottom or towards your belly, okay? Now, you're gonna take that one flap from the bottom, not both of them. Pull one flap up and you're going to crease that one flap at the top. So I'm going to show you again. You have it folded in half, peel back one layer, and fold it at the top there to make a smaller rectangle. So when you open it, this is going to be a folding surprise drawing. Now those of you who have ever seen Art Hub, 
you know, the sh show art hub. That's where I got this idea from. But again, in Art Hub, they just do kitties and doggies. I, like I said, you can do any animal you want. It's going to be a stack of animals. We're going to draw one animal um, while it's folded. And then when we open it up, we're going to see a stack of other animals hiding in between. Okay, so you want to close it back up and kind of press it down. Now, here's the deal, yo. You could do a cat or dog, or this is one that I did a practice of a doggy, okay? This is one I did of a kitty. So the little differences that you see is cats, you can add whiskers, although doggies have whiskers as well. Dogs could also have floppy ears. And in this one, I found different animal heads, a raccoon, a deer, a froggy, an owl, a beaver. You can invent your own animal. All right, so let's get started. I think for mine, though, I think I'm going to start with a doggy. Or maybe I can do a teddy bear. That bear looks very cute. So what you're going to do is you're going to start at the top of the fold, okay? and you're going to start by sketching the shape of your head, whatever shape you want. And see how you have that fold right there? You can sketch the bottom of your animal's head underneath the fold as well. Okay, but you want to keep that closed. So I would just start, whatever animal you do, start with an oval shape. And then from there, you can decide. Well, if it's a bunny, you can add big ears at the top. If it's a fox, you can have pointy ears. If it's a deer, you can add antlers. I'm thinking of a doggy. And actually, my doggy, I'm going to add floppy ears for this first one. Why not? I'm going to change it up. But you see this one, you like this is a husky. This one is a kitty. Or can be your own creature. You decide. So add any type of ears you want to your animal's head. Okay? Now you can add some cute little eyes. I'm going to add two circles. You can add another circle within the circle. and then you can color in the larger circle black if you want or any color you want. It's really up to you. It's your choice. Now most animals noses. You could do a trying upside down triangle. You can do an oval shape. If you're doing a birdie, you would probably do a longer skinnier triangle. So I'm going to draw an oval shape for the nose. And then I'm going to draw two lines for his mouth, like that. If you want to give him a little tongue, you can. He's so cute already. Again, if you have a cat, you could add whiskers. And then for his body, I'm just doing two, because he's going to be seated, two curved lines underneath his head. Now, if you're doing an animal that has front paws, as you see, I added two little U shapes. And then um, that could be for a dog or cat, and then I'm adding little lines. And if it has back legs, you can do little oval shapes, like little C shapes. That way it looks like, oh, he's so cute. It looks like he's seated. And then if your animal has a tail, you could have it coming from the side. Okay. And again, you can give your animal spots or stripes or any other details you think you'd like, okay? All right, now we got to open it up, okay? 
All right, and what we're gonna do is we are going to start with our other stack. I'm gonna add his little mouth there because we can't really see that. Now we can decide what we want to do for our next animal stack, all right? So right underneath it, I'm gonna draw another oval shape coming from that head. And this one I think I'm gonna do, I kinda like that beaver shape. I'm gonna add some round ears. Whatever kind of creature you want to do sounds good to me. He kind of looks like a monkey, actually. You're right, good, good point. I forgot his body there, but as you see, it looks like he's kind of in front of him, so I think that's fine. You want to give a little curved line for their bodies in between? That was a very good question. Thank you. Okay. I think my next one, I want to do a kitty. <laughs> he kind of looks like Yoda. <laughs> oh my goodness. Maybe it's going to be Kitty Yoda. Now, I've already got two, one, two, three. You can fit as many as you think you can. As you see here, this is my doggy because I put this on the lower half. So I'm going to make another doggy face here and fit him in. So I'm going to do a line. But, you know, you fit in as many as you can. If you can only fit three animals, that's just fine. Uh, look at this one. This one he's going to have a big spot on his eye. Also, for my last doggy, I'm going to add a collar to him and a dog tag. And on the dog tag, I'm going to write Spike because his name is going to be Spike. <laughs> Spike. And then anything else you want to add in the background, like I'm thinking this guy could be, I know it was a bear, but now I'm thinking he could be a monkey. I'm going to have him holding a banana. Eh, he's going to have a banana, or it could be a bear with a banana. Spike is going to have a tennis ball. Oh, got to finish the ears on this guy. And I'm actually thinking I'm going to give this, Spike's going to have a crown on his head. So as you see, when you close it up, okay, here's Spike, his crown, and then the magic, then you got the whole stack here. I think that's so cool to have that surprise within it. And again, if you want to mix up your animals, like you want to give your cat with antlers or bunny ears on your dog or do a hybrid animal, that would be just fine too. I'm going to add a little bit of color to mine and I'm going to give everyone a few more minutes to design their animals. And then if you'd like to do an art share, we will do that in a minute or so. Okay, I'm going to turn the camera over so we can do a share. <laughs> 